Hi, welcome to part two of the Book of Jane. And it's a beautiful sunny fall day here in uh, the Wisconsin woods. And I'll show you another one of my paintings. It's called Earthlings versus the Corporations. See the earthlings? And they're fighting the corporalians. That's uh, in my book, the Book of Jane, which is <laughs> this book. You can go to evershed.com to order it. I hope that you do. And as promised, I um, am going to continue talking to you about the book and reading from it. And in the background there is a painting and it's called Earth Pact. And two women are sitting on some foliage and they're agreeing that they are going to go and do something about the state of the earth today. So, basically, it is time for self-representation for women in government, not endless domination and discrimination. Women must have the authority to craft laws, their own laws, to protect themselves in order to function at their highest capacity. It is my deep longing that men of grace will propel the notion of equality forward in a massive sweep around the world, to end the stoning, the burning, the mutilation of women, to end war, cultural disparities, and the vast unjust chasm between those who live in extreme poverty and those who live in gluttonous excess. There have lived many great men who were leaders with divine vision, but they have been either assassinated or oppressed and suppressed for posing too great a, th a threat to the unsustainable ruling system that leads by instilling fear in the masses and by maintaining disproportionate wealth for its continuation. None ever purported that the freedom of women to legislate on a grand scale could be paramount to humanity's survival. Women must move beyond the notion of feminist waves or incremental steps forward through time, just tippy-toeing those little bits at a time. We must take the great leap now as it stands before us into our true autonomy which will be very challenging for women worldwide because we have thousands of years of denigration burned into the neurons of our brains. Whoa, there goes my painting. Little drama in the movie never helped. I mean, never did any harm. So, um, where were we? Yeah, women abort their daughters in favor of sons. They genitally mutilate their own daughters and they have become self-serving servants of the patriarchy. So this is the depth of the brainwashing that has gone on. Um, you know, we're, we're almost like our own worst enemies at this point because we haven't got together to change this. You know, the damage that male superiority has wrought on the minds of women through intimidation all over the world is, is just devastating it's almost like half of humanity is is handicapped severely handicapped and really you know within every culture lurks the denigration of women but within every culture lurks also the capacity for men to realize the true worth of women in our ultimate survival so the resources for our unshackling will be hard to come by because relatively few men in large part systematically in control of the global purse strings. It's true, you know, there's an elitist wealthy out there that I believe has enough money to house, feed and clothe all the world's poor. So it could be done. And global violence is escalating as populations grow denser and resources become scarcer as corporations suck the commons up for sale to the highest bidder. You know, we need to be mining nature's ingenuity for new ways of existing together creatively rather than destructively and utilizing nature's classic example of ecosystems that honor the measure of true economy 
Nature is the most efficient at uh, dealing with its waste and it reuses it. And I see no reason why we can't do that too. Uh, we have an amazing opportunity to find out now, today, to see if a, a significant number of women seated at the table of global consequence can nudge this world forward into a healing and more sane mode of existence. This is not lofty idealism, but imperative and once set in motion will bring swift change. So how do we start to work towards rescuing humanity from insanity? We start by leading our own life, seeking our own truths. We start by not settling. We start by questioning, by looking around us and seeing the truth and not denying it. We start by knowing what we would like to see on the planet, on the earth, and for the children and all remaining species. We start by living and loving and learning how to lose and say goodbye and face up to our weaknesses and to bolster our strengths. We learn by looking around us and seeing the oppression and suffering of other people and animals and trying to really feel it, you know, even though we can't really ever know what it's like to feel it. You know, when we're privileged or healthy and we can walk and others can't, but we can learn to forge the terror of what it means to live in a war zone, for instance, onto our hearts and let the pain burn us into action. Doing this teaches us compassion, respect, love and understanding, which when combined can ultimately make this world a livable place for all who inhabit it. And I hope you'll join me again for part three of the Book of Jane. It's been fun talking to you with all the melodrama, the painting falling down and everything. I hope you'll come back. All right, then. Um, I'll see you, hopefully, in a minute.